Okay, test, test. Welcome to the stream. This is Mason Storm DIY Audio here, and today we're going to look at designing some speakers. Um, I got a friend of mine who uh, wants some new computer speakers, doesn't want to just get the run of the mill type of stuff, wants uh, something a little bit more custom, something a little bit more fancy. And, you know, he's been watching my videos, and he's like, hey, why don't you uh, design something for me? And it's like, oh, sure, why not? So the goal is, um, well, smaller computer speakers, um, probably, you know, bookshelf size and uh, powered. And uh, just kind of want to have something kind of nice and nice and clean looking. We're thinking kind of like a Duratex uh, coating with uh, a wood face. Um, I did this stream once already, and uh, the stream failed to record, and it was choppy on the actual streaming portion. But uh, I still have the uh, the speaker I designed from that. I'm gonna kind of go through the motions again and uh, see if I can make something better than what I have here. This was just a uh, a neodymium four inch uh, driver and a neodymium uh, tweeter and uh, it's a two-way and uh, the way this is kind of designed on here looking at our speaker graph um, we got a little bit more boom than normal going for a little bit more bass and uh, and we're pretty flat in the, uh, the higher end of the frequencies which is uh, usually a good combo because having a little bit like a little bit extra bass um, really is one way to enhance speakers and uh, would make having a subwoofer a little less necessary but uh, it wouldn't hurt to add one either because with a subwoofer you can dial in the different uh, volume levels to have it kind of fit with the sonic signature of your uh, your satellites and uh, that's usually quite good because uh, different times a day you're going to want different amounts of bass and depending on what you're listening to it's like you know, just a little bit extra, that can be perfect, or it could just be super annoying and you shut the subwoofer right off and then you're you're kind of left with something a little bit more clean, a little leaner. And, and it can be better that way. So it, uh, it, it just kind of depends. I mean, there's many ways you can kind of slice it, but it's, uh, it's kind of a bit of a balancing act. The same thing too, if it's like midnight and you know other people are trying to sleep and it's like you're watching a YouTube video or a stream or something and uh, suddenly there's a little bit of music and it's like you go from barely being able to hear the guy talk to like having to turn your volume down and having your sub like your low end frequencies on its own separate controller is a nice way to kind of get around that so let's kind of close out of there for now okay so he was over the other day, and I was showing him my uh, Sabo speakers, which are made in Cambridge, Ontario. I think they're from like the 70s. Um, they're they're kind of nice. They have really nice boxes. So that's just kind of what that looks like. Uh, obviously, I had sawdust on my hand when I touched them and kind of marked it up a little bit. But uh, the grill is actually kind of inlaid, and we got the, the wood trim on there. Probably not going to be doing a wood trim, but... Uh, and there's the side of it there and the back um, I think that these were originally wall mounted at one point in time and there's the front as you can see it's kind of an inlay system where the uh, front panel can kind of come off and it's kind of flush when it's on and comes off uh, real nice very tight fitting there and uh, I really like that Kind of the idea we're going to aim for is something probably around the same size, a two-way system, and uh, do the, the Duratex on the outside, have like that textured paint, kind of like a bed liner and like a truck, and then uh, and then have the front here, this wood, uh, be like a wood finish. So kind of the reverse of the speaker we're looking at, so we'll have a nice uh, stained wood finish in the center, and then we can probably have a press fit um, speaker cover that uh, it's kind of cut to the same size as the uh, front panel here and then wrapping the cloth around it will make it a little bit thicker you don't actually need the posts on the way that I'm kind of thinking we'll be able to design it and then it just kind of inlays and uh, so you have a, like a nice sharp black but if you pull it off and you have a nice wood accent so 
that will give you a huge variation in uh, you know, the physical appearance, which is kind of nice. So. Uh, oh yeah, and that driver that's in there, I believe that's a five and a quarter inch driver. So let's just fire up our browser here. Yeah, this is the uh, driver in the design that I used on the uh, last set of speakers, like uh, the stream that failed. It didn't. It didn't upload. It didn't save. It didn't do anything right. So hopefully this stream goes better because uh, if I have no recording at the end of this, uh, that would that would kind of suck to make the same mistake twice. But uh, that is something that I would do. So here's hoping to the best. So. Got our nice neodymium uh, four-inch driver here. Uh, I did experiment with the four-inch, and uh, there's like a five and a quarter-inch version of this driver, and I found that the five and a quarter, when um, when uh, spec'd in uh, WinISD, the enclosure requirements were a little bit on the big side, and uh, I didn't I didn't really like that, so that's why I moved down to the four-inch, and it seemed to be uh, quite a bit easier to get going in uh, such a small enclosure. And here's what the uh, tweeter looks like here. Um, just a regular dome, silk dome tweeter with the uh, neodymium magnets. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to use some Dayton audio drivers because uh, they come with the um, FRD and ZMA files already included. So it's a lot easier to plug them into the software to design the crossover. So. Let's just go to Dayton Audio and see what we got. Let's go to their woofer section here. So let's just, uh, I'm going to close out of those two things I was looking at before. And let's actually just look at every uh, four inch driver they have right now. Well, four inch ish, anyway. I'm probably going to put this five inch in one here as well. Yes, I don't really need the uh, the frame like that. Um, actually, the reference series. I think that's one of those drivers where they uh, they call it a five inch, but it's really like a four inch. Like it's uh, it doesn't quite line up. So I'll put those in as well. Don't need the crazy frame. There we go. So we have however many that is. So let's start uh, going over these. Oh, I guess I didn't mention, but uh, 0.2 cubic feet, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is kind of the uh, size we're going to be looking for. That's a, that's approximately what that uh, that Sabo speaker is. So uh, these are the just generated with Basebox Pro. It's usually fairly close to WinISD. Uh, so this one passes on the uh, on the enclosure size portion anyway. Actually, let's just go through them all quickly to see if there's any that are kind of crazy outliers. That one doesn't really have it. It's pretty tiny. Point 
0.27. That's close. $18. That sounds awfully cheap. Yeah, I don't think I like that chart so much. It's not terrible. Probably won't use that one, but... Looks like it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, back to the start. Let's take a look at the the uh, chart. Sixty hertz FS. That's not too bad because you don't really want to drive your driver below its FS, and a small driver like this, you know, you probably get it running decent down to like eighty. Just kind of looking at our chart here, 90, 80. Get a little bit of a bump in there from having it ported. That'd probably be okay. I do also like that aluminum look. That's, that looks pretty sharp. Although on the smaller size drivers, it's, especially with the size of the dust cap there in the center, it, you don't really get as much silver as you'd kind of want. 60 bucks. Wow, that's a, that's a more expensive driver. Looks like the base would be weaker than the last one. Uh, that can kind of be notch filtered out. Much lower FS. Lower FS, but I think the chart, it just doesn't... I don't I don't think this is ideal for the two way that we want to make. I think if you were doing um a multiple driver like a like a tweeter dual dual woofer or um like with a mid range in there or something and you like crossed it over like one of them like lower like really low like 120 hertz or something you could kind of like make up by not having a bigger driver. But uh at the price that it is, uh, I think this one's going to have to be eliminated. Designer series four inch. Nice small enclosure. Let's see what we got here. 55 Hertz, a nice low FS. That doesn't look too bad. Um, it's kind of crazy though. Like, I mean, as far as how high the frequency goes, it's, you know, I don't like this being right down here on a four inch driver. Like that seems kind of ridiculous. Like a four inch driver, it should be smooth up to like 3K. Like that is just a huge notch. It might be okay doing a crossover with that. I don't know. I don't know how the physics plays out on how it would align. It's really, really not that bad though. I think it could be made to work for sure. Very, very small enclosure. Probably want something that works better in a slightly larger enclosure because we're going to make these uh, powered speakers as well. So we're going to put actually like a plate amp on them. Um, I figured out the plate amp we were going to use in the last one. Looked at a bunch of cheap ones, but Dayton Audio has a nice one that has um, that has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and all that fanciness, and uh, has a decent output power, as well as optical, which I think works really good for a computer. Um, a, a computer audio, because um, you got you got optical, you got analog, and you got HDMI, and 
if you're just doing a stereo set, HDMI doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially if you're doing like a gamer setup because HDMI is very reliant on uh, um, the pass-through capabilities. Like if you have HDR on there and then you got 4K, 8K and your amp doesn't support that, that could strip all of the uh, all of that off. So then it's kind of kind of crappy. HDMI, mixing the audio and the video together for with HDMI is convenient but also kind of sucks as far as technology goes because it's like if one thing doesn't support everything then nothing works and it's instantly obsolete like the first gen of HDMI uh, amps it's like they they don't support 4k they don't support 8k they don't support HDR even if you paid 1600 bucks for the thing it's like ridiculous just a total waste of money Meanwhile, it's got the right port on it. It's just it doesn't support the features because it even has like a pass through. It's not really a pass through. Well, I guess it's not really a pass through. It's more of an extract. So anyway, as of the plate amps, they got PA ones like this one up here, 800 watts, two channel. It's got DSP, whatever, whatever. And they got all the subwoofer ones. But uh, the one that we were looking at down here, was this uh, 2.1 Bluetooth Wi-Fi um, uh, amp, uh, plate amp, and it's got like a nice little remote on it. And uh, not entirely sure how deep it sticks out, but it uh, is uh, 4.5 inches wide by 6.25 high, so that's it'll definitely fit on the back of the speaker. It's just uh, might have to make it a little bit deeper when we actually go to the actual designing. So. I would probably order this first and the crossover parts or whatever and then just kind of tweak the enclosure tuning or whatever or final manufacturing size based on how deep that actually sticks out i think it's like three three four inches or something i really don't know it's i don't know how you're supposed to tell in the picture i don't know why it doesn't say in the documentation either but it does look like it'd be fairly decent we got a nice kind of power side there and a lot of cords going all over the place yeah I guess it could definitely look nicer than it does but uh, I don't think it looks too bad it looks a lot better than a lot of the incredibly cheap crap that's out there and Dayton Audio this stuff's usually fairly decent I've I've had good luck with them um, with a lot of their products from the bass shakers to speaker drivers and uh, yeah I think this would be fine. So anyway, let's uh, go back. Yeah, so let's just, uh, I think I'll eliminate the designer series four inch and just keep the five inch on our little list. It's got a little bit of a notch there, but uh, that's sometimes when you, um, you have like a high inductive load it can actually increase the sensitivity a little bit lower than where it is so that might be manipulatable so i'll keep that one get rid of the four inch and then we got less drivers to worry about 0.15 that's closer to the size we wanted anyway as far as drivers go usually if they're in the same series bigger is better Designer series aluminum. Well, there we go. Smaller enclosure recommended. I like that chart a lot more. Well, we'll keep that one on the list for now anyway. Okay, so I guess this is the five inch version of that aluminum. So it looks looks pretty similar. It's probably just a uh, superior driver. And with the enclosure size that we're kind of targeting, that'll probably work out better. So I think I'm gonna eliminate the four inch again. Let's keep the five. 
four inch paper for um box enclosure a little bit on the small side that is uh that is what I was talking about before with like a four inch driver should be relatively flat to a much higher frequency that is crazy you could almost make uh well you definitely could just a single driver like run it like full range let's see what the five inches like This one's just classified as the mid woofer. I guess it doesn't really look all that different. 0.27. Oh yeah, I like this. That is uh, quite stable up to uh, well, just 2.6, 2 2.7, 2 FS of 57. You tune it somewhere like that, and uh, that would probably be pretty good. Let's see what the 8 ohm versions like, see if it's any better. Smaller enclosure. I think I like that more, that curve. Yeah, there's a little bit of a dip in there, but. The other thing is too, it's got that, that fancy little pointy thing in the center there on the uh, dust cover. I think that, that is a nice little flare. Five inch for ohm. Yeah, this thing has that weird little thing that that other speaker had. Much better uh, bass though. It's much flatter down there. Seventy uh, hertz. That's higher frequency. I think I'll eliminate it based on that. Reference paper, woofer, 8 ohms. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 70, uh, 70 hertz on the FS doll. That's, uh, I don't know. Should probably eliminate it. Yeah, I'm going to eliminate this thing. I'm going to eliminate that one as well. So it's at eight left. I think this one's the closest to the size that we want, according to the base box pro, which who knows what that comes up with. Let's see what else we got. Those kind of look like something I'd want to play with. Let's see the other one, the eight ohm version.
Actually, I might check out to see what the uh, if there's a f five inch version of this uh, this driver because I really do like that look at that silver. Oh, what do they call these things? The aluminum series or something? Well, that's definitely not it. Point four seven. Yeah, I don't like that. Screw that. Yeah, kind of torn between the uh, designer series and the reference series. eliminate that it's tough although uh, the designer series is like 10 bucks cheaper but, uh, yeah let's actually put them side by side and see what we have going on there Well, the aluminum cone or the regular cone? That's another question. Let's go aluminum. Looks like the uh, reference or the designer is a bigger driver. 135 on its final out uh, outcast, 111 on the uh, internal versus 125 and 94. That seems like a small um, five inch woofer. Yeah, I think I'll go with this, this uh, DSA-135, whatever, whatever. So let's see if Solon actually has it in stock. Forty bucks, not too bad. Just download our data file there. And then we can look at tweeters, although I'm probably gonna just take the one that I used in the last one, but let's see what we have quickly anyway.
Actually, maybe we'll do the titanium one, see if they have that in stock, because they were low on the... Um, actually, how's that look spec-wise? Well, that's interesting. See, I think that looks a lot better. It's kind of a cool looking tweeter. Three in stock. Well, there we go. That'll work. We get our data sheet. Okay, let's uh, let's have some fun. So we'll do a two-way system, FRD tweeter. And that is uh, this TI thing. Let's do our ZMA of the tweeter. Woofer. It's a good idea to double check this uh, that you've actually loaded the right files. In the last stream, the stream that that didn't work. Um, should I select the wrong one? I <laughs> selected the wrong one and it screwed everything up. So it was like, um, it's like I, I loaded the ZMA file of the uh, the tweeter for the woofer, and then it's like I got everything all working. And then it turns out it was completely wrong, and then I switched it over, and nothing was near anything. It was uh, it was quite comical, actually. Okay, so actually, before we go any further, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this driver in the. Um, Win ISD just to confirm its size for design because I, I made that mistake also. Learn from my mistakes. You can do better than me. Okay, here we go. Win ISD.
the fun part of entering everything in. Just get everything that you can. Two point two five, two and fifty three. I like that. That looks good. Looks fine. You know, behind sixty hertz. You know, it starts to kind of roll off. Just roll off. It's completely rolled off at like fifty or so. But the hundred to sixty is generally pretty good, and that's kind of a smooth transition. Should be fine. If we go a little bit bigger, what do we get? It just goes a little bit deeper, so that's fine. Yeah, maybe something like that. Or if we go all the way up to three. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of room. A lot of room to wiggle on a driver like this. I, that's kind of what I like about the uh, designer series. So anyway, let's look at our crossover-y stuff. So we're going to probably want to cross over around 2200. A little slow, not steep enough. Let's go up to second order. I usually have the best luck with second order. Actually, I might go over the third order, see what we get. It's not really the shape I'm looking for. Actually, I never did look at the FS of the uh, tweeter. It's 
16, 12, holy, that's a high FS. No. Throw in a series resistor, may attenuate a bit. Invert it. There we go, we're close to something. This little like leg thing here is just totally in the way. If that was gone, this would oh, this would be so much easier. Let's just see what we can get.
That is so close to perfection. It is just annoying. Oh, that hump right there. How the heck am I going to get rid of that? Maybe Zobo filter or Zobor? Zobel. Zobel filter. Uh, let's give that a whirl. Okay. Oops. There we go. We're back to kind of what we had before. Okay, I think that did do something. It's actually not too bad. That's fairly flat there. We get a little bit of a high spot, a little bit of a low spot, a little bit of a high spot. But it doesn't really bounce around too much. If we just look at uh, between 90 and actually, what is this? Is that line right up there? 90? That's not right. Hold on to that. Uh, well, maybe it is 90. I find sometimes not seeing the driver as you edit it makes it easier because you, you kind of get conscious of things and it kind of throws you off. Oh, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. So 85 plus is that like a couple dB. It's about halfway there. 85. So plus minus 3 dB isn't too bad. That little spike there at uh, right near 20K, which I can't hear, but it, you know, it kind of affects the average. That's, I think that's quite a bit higher than those other peaks, let's see here. So let's go down 6 dB and that gives us our plus minus 3 dB. Hundred, ninety, eighty, seventy, sixty ish, sixty two. It's not actually that bad, but uh it's not really that much variation. The I mean there's a couple little little high spots here, but it's really uh it's really not that bad. That's kind of a smooth transition between the two uh drivers. Maybe. Just kind of tweak that a little bit. Lower that a smidgen. I 
There we go. That probably just made it ten times better. <laughs> oh, lovely. So now let's uh, let's get the actual inductor uh, uh, resistance or whatever, and then once I have that, then it's just a matter of finding uh, close values and. I kind of put together a price list. Available on back order. It just, it just doesn't end. I could have swore that was in stock. Anyway, inductors. It's nice as they have a nice little list that uh, you can just go here and then find type in your value and just quickly punch everything in. Point seven five point six. I did put a point four in there earlier as kind of like a dummy load, but that's a, it's okay. Point six, fifteen eight. Those are both kind of standardized values. Yeah, usually when you have something that's kind of normalish looking, fifteen ten, six point nine, whatever. Uh, there's certain numbers that are quite commonly used in components and if you just kind of use those typically or try to round to them as you go 4.7 21 there's just certain numbers that kind of show up more often than others oh it's like 22 is our number for that 22 and uh, 0.29 And looks like there's only really the two, so that's not too bad. So anyway, there's the uh, there's a potential crossover design. Should be fairly inexpensive. We're probably looking five six bucks for each of the inductors, and then uh, a couple dollars of capacitors, a couple couple dollars of resistors. It's really only the one resistor set, so that's not too bad. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it'd just be a matter of getting that, um, that amp and measuring, you know, how deep it actually sticks in. So, because you don't want the back of the woofer hitting on the, on the plate amp. So, um, it's just a matter of, uh, doing that and building your enclosure around that size. So I think we kind of have a really good start on what we want to do and we'll probably pan out or figure, fine tune a little bit more of this. Um, I might do this again with a different driver to see if I can find one that's in stock so that I can, you know, once the first speaker project's done that I can move into the next one relatively quickly. But uh, yeah, until yeah, next time, stay awesome.